welcome back to my studio. This is Emma on a lovely spring March afternoon here in the UK. I hope it's lovely weather where you are. I am feeling very green this afternoon, as you may have noticed. I've still got my green gilet on. Although it's spring, I'm not I'm not risking anything. It's still pretty nippy wind out there, and I have to trot up and down between here and here in the house. I like to have some layers on to keep keep the wind out. It's so bright and shiny out there, it's just lovely and you can, f you can see all the buds coming on the trees now, it's just wonderful. In fact there's some little green leaves coming out on some of my bushes in the garden, so it's all good. So I think choosing to do some greens last week was just the perfect thing. I've selected out some threads here from my landscape and I've put them in my little bowl and I find that's really helpful just to focus in on a few threads rather than the entire box of different ones I've got. I can always add some more in if I want to. So last week I chose a big box of fabrics and I selected out some fabrics. If you didn't watch last week, this is the, this is where we've got to when I finished. Oh, sorry, it's all kind of... If I hold it up, all the pins, I haven't really put enough pins in probably. Let me just pin that up a bit more. Let's just put a couple of pins back in. Hang on, I'll tell you what it is. They're not quite gone through the backing. So I'll just pin them on a little bit better. There we go. Very bad pinning. So this is the little landscape that I'm just having a play with and I don't quite know how it's going to go but I am pleased with it so far. It's always like, it's just this sort of journey, venture, venture into the unknown really these days. I don't quite know where I'm going. I've got some ideas. I would like to perhaps do a row of something going across it but I don't really know at this point. So really your guess is as good as mine but anyway. I'm just so pleased that it's spring. It's just so nice. I feel like we've been, we've kind of been, you know, cooped up all, all winter. Um, we've had some very big storms and things. I know everybody's had the same sort of interesting weather patterns and some people have done very badly in over the winter and I'm just grateful that we've, you know, got off relatively, you know, scot-free apart from our electricity going off in November. So to have spring here and now is just lovely. I'm on the cusp of planting some seeds so I'm trying to get on with the painting and decorating that I've been doing in the, one of the rooms we had um, the builders in last last autumn. Gosh, that was so long ago, goodness me. Like the end of October, I think they came. And I think we got it finished just after Christmas because they had to go away and come back. Or it might have been just around about Christmas. I think that was their last visit. And it was such a dark, dank hole because all the plaster and all the, all, the, all the cement was just all drying off and it took weeks to dry. So I've been in there with my white paint and it's beginning to look really, really good. I've literally been doing an hour a day because it's just too big a job otherwise. Um, it's a room, because it's a very old house, it's got lots of little funny little nooks and crannies. So I've just been going in and plastering and fixing and fiddling and filling holes and um, doing all the fiddly bits and I'm going to get a second coat on maybe, maybe this week of paint and then it'll really look good. So, and then as to, as to growing things, well I'm just kind of teetering on the brink of planting some seeds I have to say I was looking at some sweet pea seeds this morning um, in the shops and thinking mm, is it too early and I'm thinking well no the thing is if you don't get them planted now suddenly it will be July and I will have missed the boat but it is this balance I think of putting things uh, into the trays getting them started and then once they start growing you've got to have them outside haven't you to get the light on them but then if the cold nights come um, you know, that's then devastated, isn't it? So you've got to kind of put them out and bring them in and put them out and bring them in. So I'm, I'm not quite ready for that bit yet. I'm still just, you know, still a little bit in winter mood. Um, but very, very soon, I feel very, very soon. So I think, let's get on with this because I've been I've been wondering what I'm going to do with it since I, since I got it to this stage last week and I'm just super excited to get going. So let's set up my sewing machine and let's get going. Okay, so I've just started stitching along here in a very simple way and I'm just taking the pins out as I go. I'm just doing a simple stitch. This is something you could almost do without needing to do free machine embroidery, to be honest, when I'm doing something just as simple as this. And I'm going to just, I'm going to pin this a little bit further down so that I can just flip this back, I think, because I want to be able to come right down this edge so it goes underneath. I'm just going to stop and come back up and have a look at that and see what it's doing. You can see it's just a simple waggly edge and I'm just going to come off that because I just want to have a little look 
and see what I'm feeling about this. I think I'm just going to do some very simple lines going across here and it's going to kind of quilt it. So as I say, I'm going to just, in fact, now I don't want to take it off because I've got it all nicely laid out. So I'm just going to flip that back a bit. You have to decide when you start to stitch something like this, you have to decide whether you're going to start at the top end and kind of work down or the bottom and work up, but this time I'm actually starting in the middle because I feel as it's quite crucial to get these little bits nicely aligned. So I'm going to start here and once you get started, it starts to unfold how you're going to do it. So I'm going to just do some straight stitching. Oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not because that's just come out of there. Ew, diddly diddly. Oops, let's just move that out of the way. There we go, got it through the hole. That's it, it's jolly good. There we go. Move me downstairs thread, there it is. That's it, it's jolly good. Right, set this back up again. There we go. Do you know I can hear the birds singing outside? I don't know whether the microphone will pick that up for you, but that's really lovely. Okay, also, so having done having done that little line of stitching, I'm now thinking it's at this point I need to decide whether I'm turning these in, which I think I'm going to turn these in. So I'm just going to trim this back a little bit. I've got stitch and tear underneath here and some curtain interlining, but I just think I want to cut the stitch and tear back a little bit, so I'll just do that. Right, let's get this thing going. So you see that's starting to make quite a nice pleasing quilted effect. So I'll carry on stitching this bit and then I'll show you the next bit I'm going to do. Okay, so I've changed the colour a little bit for this one and I'm just doing the same kind of thing as here, but I'm going up and down. I wanted to try and keep the, this sort of crinkly effect as best I can. And I'm just going up and down. Again, as I say, you don't even really need to do free machine embroidery with this. You could actually just put your presser foot on and do this like that. Now, I can see the edge is coming up, so I need to trim my edge and I'm going to fold the edge in again. You can see I didn't really think about this and I don't mind that. I'm, as I say, I'm just playing and experimenting and trying not to plan. I'm trying to take out the planning. From this piece and just do it in a quite a free way. So I'm just going to trim this little bit back from here, this stitch and tear, and then I'll do the edge again. No big deal. So this is actually the back of what I'm doing. You can see it's really quite a quilted effect because I've got the thick wadding underneath and I'm doing very simple stitches. I'm really quite appreciating this. This is kind of where I started out, which was in quilting. So I'm just having a bit of fun and playing with it. But I've trimmed this down and now I'm going to turn it over and we'll do finishing off the stitching. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this over and I'm going to pin it longwise this time. And I'm trying to make sure I catch that bit underneath so that that doesn't get all ruckled up, which can happen. So we'll just get this stitched down. Pull that out a bit. Now I don't want to catch that pin with my stitching. I'm just going to twizzle this round a bit. So, 
it's beginning to take shape. So I'm going to keep working on it. I'll show you bits and pieces as I go along and then I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. Okay, so I'm now working on this piece here and I've decided I'm just going to do some short pieces, short stitching going up like that. I'll show you it. It's easier to show you than describe. It might even be that I'll put a second colour across the top, I'm not sure. But I quite like the fact that it's contrasting with this and it's as though it's got like grass waving in the breeze or something. That's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. Whether it's going to look like that, who knows. <laughs> Just that round. Go back over. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm not going to worry if it goes over the edges of that one. I'm not going to worry about it because... So, oh, sorry, that does really weird things to my eyes. I don't know if it does it to yours. It's obviously the way the fabric is woven. So I'm beginning to feel like... Uh, just put it back a little bit. Like I'm getting somewhere. That's that's made a bit of excitement for me on there. That's kind of a bit more reckless. This is quite sort of controlled, even though it's quite waggly which I quite like, um, and this bit's just fairly, well, it's just kind of made a sort of a texture across there, And but it, they all three are different and I like that. So I'm going to work on these bits next and we'll see what happens with those. You can see the fabric is puffing up a little bit here, which is why you have to either work top down or bottom up or, you know, centre outwards so that your fabrics can move like that because it's what's going to happen. As you stitch, it does tighten things up. So you have to just be aware of that and expect it to move. And this is what I love. I mean, you could, obviously, you could be putting this down with some bonderweb or something that actually holds it rigidly in place. But personally, I think this is much more fun to deal with. I think um, as long as you do it in a logical sort of fashion, you have to be a little bit logical about it. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's a little bit of planning going into it. But as I say, I'm just trying to keep this free. So the next thing, I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to do that next. And you'll get to see it when I've done it. Or even as I'm doing it, who knows. So I've changed my colour thread here and I'm moving on to this very pale bit. I've got quite a, a nice sharp green. It's quite pale, but it's, it's quite nice and bright. I'm trying to get some spring greens going on here. And I think I'm going to do some horizontal lines along here of some kind to sort of go with that's going that way and that's going that way so I think we'll go for a bit of contrast here so I'm just going to start off and see what comes let's take my thread out of the way be a little bit careful because it is quite puffy on this bit here. Now I need to do this edge also. So let's get that edge tucked in. There we go. Oops, now it's perhaps a bit too far in now. That one's sticking out a little bit. Edges are funny things. And I like it if they're not all in a line. I think it's, it works quite nicely. If you've got bits sticking out, I think that's quite good. And just pop a pin in there to hold it. How much have I got tucked under? I always sort of look underneath to make sure I haven't got too much tucked under. So, for example, that would be way too much. This bit, this bit would be way too much. It'll just get all ruckled up. So we'll trim that off when the time comes. I'm just going to very carefully... Uh, what shall I do? Take that pin out, I think. No. That's not worked very well. I think I'm just going to hold this. I'm just going to hold this and go back and forwards a little bit. I need to make sure that that gets tucked in as well. So a bit of going back over this way. You can see it's an art, isn't it, doing this? 
nothing's ever perfect and I don't want it to be perfect. I just want it to feel nice, that's all. Here we go, I have stitched all of these pieces down now and you can see there's a variety of um, stitch effects going on. You can possibly also see there's a little hole appeared there which is not great but I'm just going to leave that for now because I don't know exactly what I'm going to be putting on to the front of it so I can always cover that up a little bit. You see mistakes are made and if I show you this, this is this is the undoing that I've had to do on odd, on, on odd bits where I uh, had to get my little friendly stitch ripper out and undo some bits that weren't stitched quite right. I will show you the um, the back so you can see this. I'll just give you a... you can see all the lovely stitching on there. That possibly needs to be stitched down a little bit more but it's, I think that's okay. So you can see it's very simple stitching but quite effective when you put it all together. And I do like the way the edges are turned in. I don't mind how I do my edges but this one just felt like it wanted the edges turning in to give it a bit of um, coherence somehow. So this bit, I haven't stitched this bit down at all because I'm going to be thinking about the composition next, exactly what I'm going to be putting on top of here and then I will know how to stitch this down. I think it might be verticals going like that or shorter ones pops like that, more sort of um, like that rows. But we shall see. Um, I've just, you know, enjoyed making it so far. Oh, I was going to say how big this is because I thought somebody might want to know how big this is, just out of interest, roughly speaking. So it's about 14 inches by, where's the bottom of that here, by about seven. So I don't know whether that's um, some magical number, but that's the way I cut the fabrics, 14 by seven. There's probably some golden rule in there, but I don't really work on these things. I just cut it to the size I wanted to cut it. So I'm going to leave it there for today because I think that's quite enough. And next week I'll show you how I get on with the composition bit on the front that's going to add some excitement to it, I hope, or some interest at least, some foreground interest. So thanks ever so much for watching. Have a peaceful week and I will see you again very soon in my studio. Bye for now.